What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. A few days ago, Jamie Dimon, the longtime CEO of JP Morgan, gave a dire warning about the economy. Let's have a listen. Right now, it's kind of sunny, things are doing fine. You know, everyone thinks the, the Fed can handle this. That hurricane is right out there down the road coming our way. We just don't know if it's a minor one or Superstorm Sandy or uh, yeah, Sandy or, or uh, Andrew or something like that. And it's, you, you better brace yourself. Currently, the economic situation looks pretty good. Unemployment has already fallen to pre-COVID levels, wages are increasing strongly, and there are more job openings than unemployed people. But according to Diamond, there are dark storm clouds on the horizon which threaten to crush the economy across three major axes. The first two threats come from 40-year high inflation and how this is forcing the Fed to tighten monetary conditions at an unprecedented rate. Over a less than two-year period, they're expected to increase the benchmark federal funds rate from 0% to 3%, one of the fastest hiking cycles in history. During the pandemic, the Fed pursued a historical quantitative easing program, printing $5 trillion new dollars to pump into the bond market. Now they're doing a 180-degree U-turn and sucking this money back out of the economy at a rate of $95 billion every single month. And as if all that wasn't enough, we're also facing the black swan event of the Russo-Ukrainian war, which is wreaking havoc on global commodity markets, especially with regards to energy and food. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into these economic threats and see how bad it is likely to get. Before we get into the video, I want to tell you about our new Wall Street Millennial newsletter. This daily newsletter covers all the biggest market-moving events that you need to know to get your day started. All the news, insights, and analysis gets sent each morning straight to your email inbox. The best part is, it's completely free. To sign up, just go to wallstreetmillennial.com newsletter and input your email. You can unsubscribe at any time. Link is in the description below. After the 2008 financial crisis, the Federal Reserve took short-term interest rates down to zero and bought trillions of dollars worth of bonds under their quantitative easing program. At the time, many old-school economists and right-wing politicians criticized these extreme measures, saying that it would result in hyperinflation. To their great surprise, this hyperinflation never materialized. Prices stayed stable, with inflation running near the 2% target, and the economy gradually recovered. With inflation tame, the Fed saw no need to increase interest rates, and their short-term policy rate stayed anchored near zero until 2016. There are two main reasons for this. While the money supply increased by trillions of dollars, most of this ended up sitting on bank balance sheets, not making its way into the real economy. Also, we are still in the golden age of globalization. Expensive domestic manufacturing was being replaced by cheap foreign labor, keeping a lid on price increases. As the economy was recovering from the pandemic, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell seemed to think that we would have a similar situation. He infamously declared that inflation would be transitory and kept interest rates near zero throughout 2021. What he failed to consider was that both Donald Trump and Joe Biden signed multi-trillion dollar stimulus plans, which were far greater than any of the 2008 stimulus. This along with supply chain issues have caused inflation to accelerate to the most extreme level since the 1980s stagflation. The Fed is now finally taking its head out of the sand and pursuing the most aggressive tightening cycle of the past generation. They've already increased the short-term federal funds rate from 0% to 0.75% and are expected to take this all the way up to 3% by 2023. This would be the highest interest rate since 2008. At the same time, they're starting to unwind their $9 trillion balance sheet at a rate of $95 billion per month. The last time they did quantitative tightening like this was 2018, where they reduced by only $50 billion, or about half that rate. So both the current size of the balance sheet as well as the speed it will be sold off are unprecedented. The reduction in balance sheet is primarily executed by selling US government bonds and to a lesser extent mortgage-backed securities. This could be a big problem. The US government has racked up $30 trillion of debt and is still borrowing about $1 trillion per year. During the pandemic, the Federal Reserve would buy the bonds that the government was issuing, allowing Washington to spend almost unlimited money to rescue the economy. Now the reverse is happening. The Fed is selling bonds instead of buying them. The legendary hedge fund manager Ray Dalio has been sounding the alarm about this situation for a while now. There would be a huge supply-demand imbalance with US government debt. The government wants to issue more and more bonds to fund its deficit spending, but most investors don't want to buy these bonds as the nominal interest payments will be eaten up by inflation. By the basic laws of supply and demand, this means that yields on government bonds have to go higher, and probably a lot higher. 
The interest rate on the 10-year Treasury bond has increased from 0.5% at the depth of the pandemic to almost 3% today. In nominal terms, this is higher than the pre-COVID level. But when you consider that inflation is running north of 8%, you're still losing money in real terms if you buy a bond. To convince people to lend money to the government and soak up supply from the Fed's quantitative tightening, yields might have to go to 5, 6, and maybe even as much as 10%. If bond yields really go this high, it could cause the stock market to crash even further, as investors dump shares in favor of getting guaranteed nominal yield in the treasury market. According to data compiled by Nobel Prize winning economist Robert Schiller, stock market valuations are very sensitive to interest rates. This chart shows a cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio of the S&P 500 versus the yield on the 10 year treasury bond. During the stagflation period of the 1970s and 80s, bond yields skyrocketed and the PE ratio tanked to as low as 6. Over the next 40 years, the bond yield steadily decreased and the PE ratio increased. If we really are on the verge of another stagflation period, we could see valuations get crushed just like they did 40 years ago. In addition to all the Fed-related headwinds, we're also facing the black swan event of the current Russo-Ukrainian war. The war recently entered its 100th day and shows no signs of ending anytime soon. While the most significant issue is clearly the tragic loss of life, there are also economic consequences affecting the entire world. The price of Brent crude oil has already surged to $120 per barrel on the back of decreasing Russian supply. And in fact, the situation is even worse than it first appears. This increase in oil prices has happened in spite of a strict COVID lockdown in the economically important Chinese city of Shanghai. After two months, Shanghai is finally starting to reopen, which could cause a surge in demand, pushing prices up even further. According to Jamie Dimon, prices have the potential to surge to $150 or even $175 per barrel by the end of the year, which would be massively inflationary. Perhaps even more concerningly, Ukraine is known as the breadbasket of Europe and is the fifth largest exporter in the world. The Russian Navy is blockading Ukrainian ports, preventing wheat from leaving the country. Economists expect Ukrainian wheat exports to fall by as much as 60% this year. International wheat prices have already soared to 10-year highs since the invasion began, with no signs of coming down as long as the war continues. According to the UN's Food and Agricultural Organization, the global level of food prices is the highest it has ever been since they started keeping track of it in 1960, even after you adjust for inflation. This puts the Fed in a conundrum. Their only policy tool is to raise interest rates, thereby decreasing demand. They can't increase oil or wheat production, and they certainly can't end the war in Ukraine. As aggregate commodity supply decreases, the Fed has to decrease demand by at least this amount to bring down inflation. The further output falls, the more draconian the rate hikes will have to be to reach a new equilibrium. If the Fed is serious about taming inflation, and it now seems that they are, the chances of them inducing a recession have increased substantially. While the aggregate employment numbers are still looking strong for now, there is growing anecdotal evidence of a slowdown. Elon Musk recently told Tesla executives to lay off 10% of their white-collar workforce, as he feels very bad about the economy. With JP Morgan being the largest bank in the US, and one of the largest in the world, CEO Jamie Dimon has a unique vantage point to observe the real economy at a very high frequency. He can look at the activity of the bank's customers, how much money they're borrowing, what types of projects they're funding, and how many people they are hiring. And while he hasn't seen a significant slowdown yet, he sees vulnerability based on all these potential headwinds that we could face over the next year. So what will be the effects of this economic hurricane? Interest rate sensitive segments of the economy like real estate construction will be some of the hardest hit. The average interest rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage has increased from about 3% during the pandemic to 5% today. While a 2% increase doesn't sound like a lot, it could have a huge impact on housing demand. For a $300,000 house, a 2% increase in interest rate will increase the monthly payment by $300 for a 30-year loan. We're already starting to see signs of this. Rocket Mortgage is one of the largest mortgage originators in the US. Their business boomed during the pandemic, but is quickly coming back down as interest rates rise. The increase in energy prices is having a much broader impact on the economy. Just about every single physical good has to be transported by truck, train, or boat, all of which are powered by oil. Thus far, retailers have been able to pass these higher input prices onto consumers given the backdrop of growing wages. But if the Fed tanks the economy into a recession, this will no longer be the case. Just a few weeks ago, Target's share price lost a quarter of its value after they reported disappointing profit margins driven mostly by cost inflation. If the economic hurricane scenario that Jamie Dimon is predicting plays out, these cost pressures will only get worse. So how should we prepare ourselves for all these risks? 
Jamie Dimon says that JP Morgan will be more conservative with its balance sheet. They'll reduce their lending to risky borrowers and hold more safe assets. As an individual investor, you can also make moves to prepare for the potential stagflation. As we said on this channel many times before, oil stocks were the best performing sector by far during the previous stagflation. While history doesn't repeat itself, it does rhyme. As oil companies have underperformed technology stocks over the past decade, they've come to make a smaller and smaller proportion of the broad indices. This has left many passive investors underexposed to this powerful stagflation hedge. Over the past few months, the XLE Energy ETF has finally started to mount a comeback. If oil prices really increase to $150 or even $175 per barrel like Diamond is warning about, there could be further room to run. While this video is not financial advice, I personally have increased the weighting of oil stocks in my portfolio recently for the exact reasons that Jamie Dimon is talking about. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about Jamie Dimon's prediction of an economic hurricane? Are we entering a stagflation like the 1970s? Let us know in the comments section below. If you want daily updates about inflation, the oil market, and everything else related to stocks and investing, don't forget to sign up to the Wall Street Millennial newsletter for free, link in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.